Welcome everyone. This is Marco Vujicic. Uh, this will be our last update in 2020 for our data on the impact of COVID-19 on the dental care sector. You're listening to this in early January. Happy New Year, everyone from the Health Policy Institute. Uh, before we get to the data, just do one, one more announcement. Um, we've uh, advertised this a couple rounds now, but we did release uh, late last year a new consultancy report related to how COVID-19 is reshaping dentists' purchasing habits for equipment and supplies. So if you are a manufacturer in the dental space or a distributor, uh, this report is targeted to you. Uh, it's available for purchase at ada.org slash HPI. And you can go ahead and get a sneak peek there. Um, and, but again, lots of insights for the sales world, um, for the manufacturers and distributors as well. So please have a look. Okay, as usual, we'll cover three areas. We'll give you the latest data on recovery and I guess our new steady state. Uh, these data are from the week of December 14th. We'll go through specific questions of the week on our thematic issues. Uh, we have two areas that we focus on this round. It's on COVID-19 testing and dental practices, as well as dentist viewpoints and attitudes towards getting themselves vaccinated against COVID-19. We'll also end with our latest update on consumer sentiment data uh, sourced from U.S. households. You can find all the details on the methodology uh, as well as the detailed reports, um, a, a dashboard where you can quickly look at these data state by state, um, recordings and PowerPoint slides as well. All of that is at ada.org slash HPI. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Chelsea Foss, uh, who will walk us through the key findings. Over to you, Chelsea. Great, thank you, Marco. Since the beginning of our polling, we've been asking, what is the current status of your dental practice? Following that green line over time, representing dentists in private practice, we see that as of the week of December 14th, 39% of practices were reporting open and business as usual. There's been a slight increase in those reporting business as usual since our last wave of polling at the end of November. Here we have our data on patient volume. We've been asking, how does this week compare to what is typical in your practice in terms of total patient volume? On average, patient volume was at 78% of pre-COVID-19 levels as of the week of December 14th. Again, this represents a slight increase since our last wave of polling. Here we have practice volumes by geography, DSO affiliation, practice size, and specialty. You can see some variation in patient volumes in these breakdowns. Higher patient volumes were reported by endodontists and oral surgeons, dentists in group practices, and dentists practicing in rural and suburban areas. The yellow sliver shown at the top of some of these bars represents the increase in patient volume since our last wave of polling at the end of November. As mentioned in our last update, our staffing data are right in line with what the Bureau of Labor Statistics are showing as well. The green line shown for November 2020 indicates that dentist offices were at 98.5% of employment compared to January levels, which was a slight increase since October. And we've been asking, is your dental practice paying staff this week? The green line indicates dentists who say they're, they're paying their full staff as of that week. That was at 94%. An additional 5% said they're partially paying their staff. So we're at 99% of staffing when you include both of those. There's some variation by DSO affiliation, 
practice size, and geography, and all of that data is available online in our report. We've been asking specifically of non-owner dentists, are you being paid this week? As of the week of December 14th, three out of four employee dentists were back to being paid fully. About 20% report being paid partially, and the last five, not at all. So there is a lingering employment effect for employee dentists. Here's our standard core question on PPE supply. How many days worth of the following PPE does your practice have at this time? Categories include N95s, surgical masks, face shields, gowns, disinfecting supplies, and gloves. We move from the left in red with zero day supplies to the right in green with more than two weeks supply. Overall, not much change here. We see that gowns, gloves, and disinfecting supplies continue to be a challenge for some dentists. Now let's get into the questions of the week, starting with COVID testing and then moving toward COVID vaccination. When asked, does your practice offer in-office rapid response COVID-19 testing for patients? You can see that only very few dentists are doing this in practice, 1% nationwide. Point of care testing for COVID-19 is largely not being done in dental practices as of mid-December. A slightly greater share of oral surgeons and dentists practicing in DSO affiliated and large group practices are offering testing. Again, those data are available in our full report at ada.org slash HPI. As of the time of this recording, we know that a second vaccine has been approved for use in the U.S. Hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers have now been vaccinated or received the first dose of their vaccine. We've all been hearing about and learning how some communities in the population are hesitant about the, receiving the vaccine themselves due to safety concerns. And some of those folks include healthcare providers. So we wanted to get a sense of what the vaccine confidence was among dentists. We asked, how important do you think it is for dentists to be vaccinated against COVID-19? The vast majority, 84%, find it to be either extremely or very important. And if you look down below, you can see that specialists find greater importance in vaccination compared to general dentists. Only 3% of dentists going back to up top and looking to the far right in that lightest shade of teal, only 3% of dentists say that vaccination is not at all important. There's variation in the importance placed on vaccination by practice char characteristics. Dentists in large group practices place a greater importance on vaccination as do dentists practicing in urban areas and non-DSO affiliated practices and owner dentists. Similarly, we see some variation in the perceived importance of vaccination for dentists by dentist demographic, age and gender. With increasing age, dentists find more importance in vaccination. More male than female dentists find it extremely important to be vaccinated against COVID-19. To those who indicated they thought it was at least slightly important for dentists to be vaccinated, we asked, now that a vaccine is available, how soon do you think dentists should get, the vac should get vaccinated? The majority of dentists believe they should get vaccinated against COVID-19 immediately or as soon as it is available to them. We did see a difference in the dentists in large group practices where the vast majority of those folks believe they should get the vaccination immediately. Lastly, for our questions of the week, Here's that same question, how soon do you think dentists should get vaccinated by dentist demographic, age and gender again? 
a lesser share of younger dentists and female dentists believe that dentists should receive the vaccine as soon as it is available to them. One possible explanation for this may be that there's greater vaccine hesitancy in these younger dentists and female dentist groups. Now we'll shift gears and look at some consumer polling that we've been working on with Engages, a leading research firm. The data we present here are from a survey administered to a nationally representative set of households since the onset of the pandemic. We've worked with their team over the past few months to better understand consumer sentiment toward dental visits. We've been asking with Engages, which of the following conditions is closest to your current point of view regarding visiting a dentist's office? In the forest green, the 31%, those are folks who have been recently active. They've been back to the dentist in the past month. Then we have those who are ready to go, the 55% who will head back to their dentist office whenever their next appointment comes around. In yellow, we have the assurance seekers, the 4% who say they need a little extra comfort and assurance, whether it be from a local health department, their dentist, the CDC or ADA, that it's safe to go back. And then lastly, in red, we have those who need a medical breakthrough, 10% of the population. So all in all, we see that about 14% of folks are not ready quite yet to get back to the dentist's office. That leaves 86% who are ready to go or have been. As you've seen in our patient volume data, we're getting pretty close to that 86%. Our patient volume as of this week, again, was at 78% compared to pre-COVID levels. And that takes care of our update for the week of December 14th. To quickly recap, patient volume was estimated at 78% of pre-COVID levels. Our staffing and dentist's office is Offices is at 98.5% of pre-COVID levels, and three in four, three out of four employee dentists were being paid fully as of the week of December 14th. Rapid response testing is largely not being offered in dental practices. This is likely due to a combination of factors such as cost and availability of reliable testing. The vast majority of dentists find it extremely or very important that they get vaccinated against COVID-19. And the majority believe they should get vaccinated as soon as the vaccine is available to them. Older dentists, dentists in large group practices, and specialists find vaccination to be particularly important. Regarding consumers, we know that there's a, a small sliver of folks who still aren't ready to head back to the dental office. So the vaccine availability for the general public will remain an important part of bringing, bringing the remaining patient base back into the dental office. As always, our full reports are available online at ada.org slash HPI. On behalf of Marco and the entire HPI team, thank you all so much for listening. Please feel free to reach out to us with questions and hope your new year is off to a great start.